I've dreamed of throwing a disc over 120 meters ever since I started playing disc golf more actively two years ago. This is me in the summer of 2020, this is the first backhand clip I have of myself. This was a max distance throw for me and it went about 75 meters. And comparing this clip to all the pro disc golfers made me realize for the first time that my form was terrible. And since then I've been practicing day and night, winter and summer, inside and outside, filming my form, making changes to it, rinse and repeat. My max distance started slowly going up, and a couple weeks ago I was out at the field again throwing max distance shots, and I got one throw where everything lined up really well to create a very good personal record. But before we take a look at the full throw, let's go through the journey of how I got there. We're gonna take a look at some of the form clips I've collected along the way, and we're gonna talk about the fixes I made to my form, and I'm gonna talk about how I finally found the snap. And we are even gonna use simulations to illustrate a few very interesting aspects of backhand mechanics. And in general I just want to make a relatable and helpful video for any disc golfer who's struggling to get more distance, be it 70 meters or 100 meters or whatever. There's so many stories and videos of people throwing super far and learning to do that very quickly, which can feel pretty discouraging. But yeah, don't worry, there are people like me who spend countless hours and multiple years practicing just to get to a point where I can throw consistently over 100 meters and occasionally a little more. So by going through my journey of improvement and sharing all the things that help me get more distance, I'm hoping to help all of you guys do the same. So let's get started. The story starts on the 1st of June 2020 when I buy my first disc golf starter set. I used to throw frisbees as a kid, but with these disc golf discs I have no idea what I'm doing. So I start watching YouTube videos and figuring out the basic footwork and the basic structure of the throw. So before filming this first clip I've already done a couple weeks of work on the basic cadence of the throw. You can see that I've figured out the initial step, the X step, the reach back and throw. But for this video there was nothing too interesting in the process of learning that. It was just a case of watching a few videos and getting my body used to the basic sequence of movements. The first major problem I understood in my form at this point was the inconsistent throwing plane. So looking at this clip I saw that the disc starts pretty low here and suddenly goes up here in the reach back and is very tilted. And then my arm swings downwards after the throw. From YouTube I learned that what you want to do is to mostly have the disc and the arm move on a single plane to make it more efficient and accurate. I also noticed that my right arm and upper body stop pretty quickly after the throw, whereas all the pros swing their arm pretty far back here and the upper body turns this way after the throw. So yeah, that's the first major thing I started overhauling. And in this clip a couple months later you can see how I'm really focusing on the single plane of movement and an extended follow through. Now because of some other problems in the throw, the energy isn't transferred very well to the disc and my body keeps rotating a bit too much at the end. But I got the throwing plane thing down pretty well early on, which was a really good foundation to build on. And by the way, around the same time I was also working on not tilting my back like this when reaching back, but rather thinking of it as just a rotation of the torso around a single axis like this. The single biggest thing for me in getting the throwing plane sorted was to get the elbow on the plane before I even start the run up. You know, I was doing something like this in the first clip, in the middle of the X step. The elbow is going all over the place. And here in the later clip you can see that I raise my elbow on the throwing plane before I even take the first step. Okay, so the second major overhaul for me was in my footwork. I had no idea I was doing this, but look at my left foot in this later clip, right as I'm about to throw. Did you catch that? I didn't from these videos because I didn't realize I should be paying attention to it. I was entirely focused on the upper body at the time. But later when I shot my first slow motion video I finally realized why my footwork had been feeling really unnatural and uncontrolled up to that point. Again, watch the left foot. Yeah, I'm subconsciously doing a full repositioning of my left foot right before I throw. And after watching this clip I realized that it's because I orient my foot too backwards like this. And it makes my hip unable to rotate all the way here, which it needs to do to make the throw work. 
so yeah, I end up doing this weird subconscious repositioning, which is obviously something you don't want to do, because it introduces a ton of unnecessary variables to the throw, and it also forces me to be on my heel with the left foot, which is not good. The weight should be always on the ball of your feet. It makes everything much more nimble and powerful, because you have one extra lever you can use, and you have the extra set of calf muscles, which you can't really use if you are on your heel. So in this clip a couple weeks later you can see that I've already almost got rid of the repositioning and in this clip a couple months later I've fixed it entirely. So it took a lot of reps to get rid of it but man was it a big difference. My scores improved and most importantly throwing felt much more natural and unforced. So what's next? Am I done? Oh no, no 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 no. This is the point where I get stuck at the 90 to 100 meters range and that's for a max distance Anheuser flex. My regular golf throws were going like 85 to 90 meters. And looking at my throw, I thought that I had all of the big clear mistakes fixed now, so I was kind of stumped as to why the distance wasn't improving anymore. I thought that it had to have something to do with how I use my upper body, like something was slightly wrong in the very basic mechanics of a backhand throw. I didn't feel the snap in my throw, it didn't feel like I had a proper whip motion happening as I released the disc, and so started the hunt for the snap. First I went with the hips first route, where the idea is that you first start rotating at the hips and the upper body comes a bit later, and that's supposed to generate more power. But that didn't really work out for me, and to me it seemed like most of the top pros rotate pretty evenly across the entire torso. So the second thing I went for was the left hand. Looking at this clip you can see that the shoulder rotation is happening pretty evenly. The whole upper body just kinda rotates at the same time, like this. I knew that you can get a lot more power into the throw by sort of driving the rotation with the left hand and the whole left side of the torso. And I'm trying to do that here, I'm trying to drive the rotation with the left side, but I realized that the left side is just too late to the party, it's a timing issue. The left arm and shoulder start to come around just as the right shoulder is also starting to move, and what ends up happening is that they both kind of just rotate at the same time, like this, and the left side doesn't really get a chance to uh, pull on the right side. In this later clip you can see how I'm starting to drive into the rotation with my left hand a little bit before the right hand, and there's also more power now in the motion of the left hand and the hip. And it's improving things a little bit, but it's just a start. I keep practicing, I do a lot of these indoor dry runs with a glove or a towel or something, to test out things and to get in some quick reps without having to go outside every time. By the way, if you want to get a feel for the left arm driving the right arm, try this. Stand still like this, let your right arm just hang here without doing anything to it. It's just dead weight. And then focus on bringing your left shoulder here, rotating a little bit at the hips also, and then quickly swinging them here, both the left shoulder and hip. Watch what happens to the right arm. It does the throwing motion all by itself. And that was a big aha moment for me at the time. Also, up until this point I've been fiddling with the timing and angle of the upper right arm. I had moderate success in finding some whip-like feel by lagging my upper right arm behind the torso rotation, as you can see in this indoor clip. You see that the angle between my shoulder line and the upper right arm is significantly less than 90 degrees at this point of the throw, meaning that the upper right arm was kind of lagging behind the shoulder rotation, like this, if I exaggerate a little bit. And even though this ended up being a wrong approach, finding that initial feel for the whip-like action turned out to be really useful later on. Because then I stumbled upon the advice to make space for the disc in front of you. So instead of just having it here while throwing, you are instructed to make space here by bringing your arm out like this. So you can see that without moving my spine or changing this angle here, I can bring my arm quite a lot forward just by rotating this part here, like this. In the video I was watching they didn't really say why specifically it's important to do this, but the throws looked good, so I decided to try anyway. So I start to fiddle around with this, and I realize that when I throw like this, I sometimes feel a very clear tension in my back somewhere. Almost like a bit of pain sometimes. Like some of the back muscles here were being stretched or used in ways that I clearly haven't done before. And that feeling turned out to be a major jackpot for me. So before when I was trying this left arm first thing, I understood the idea and I could feel it doing a little something to help the right arm, but I wasn't really getting anything huge out of it. 
but now that I really brought my right shoulder forward like this, I could actually feel a very tangible resistance whenever I got the timing of things right. And immediately I started to feel some actual snap in my release. And I realized that instead of lagging the whole upper arm behind the torso rotation, a much more effective mental note is to think of it as lagging just this part behind and keeping your upper arm more rigid and rotating with the torso. You immediately have a very useful resistance, like this just won't rotate further than this, it just isn't able to. It's a backstop and that's hugely useful. Take a look at this later clip where I'm now bringing the right shoulder much more forward. It might be hard to see from a far away video like this, but this throw feels very different now. You can see that when I have the right shoulder up front and I drive the rotation with the left shoulder, my both shoulders end up in the front like this. And what that does is it really tightens all the back muscles here. And that did two things for me. It provided a clear sensory feedback of if my timings were right, and it also helped me actually transfer the power from the left arm to the right arm via these tight back muscles. I was talking about the backstop with this, and this is why it's useful. When all of this is tight back here, you can pull on the right arm with the left arm, and the right shoulder has nowhere to go except rotate from the force of the left one. But even if the shoulder has a backstop, the upper arm doesn't. It can still go here, and at this point I realized that for the mechanics of the backhand throw, it really is best to have a roughly 90 degree angle between the upper right arm and the chest. So this wasn't good. So this is where I started to fiddle around in Blender with its rigid body simulations, to see if I could understand the optimal angles better. I'm gonna keep this short for now, there's so much to dive into with these simulations. But yeah, this is a simple mechanical representation of a person throwing a disc, specifically the shoulders and arms, and we're gonna be looking at it from above, kinda like this. So long story short, I used to have an intuitive feeling that it would generate more whip effect if the upper arm lags behind the torso rotation, like you see on the bottom there. But yeah, it turns out it really is much better to keep the angle roughly at 90 degrees, like here at the top. And it totally also makes intuitive sense looking at it like this. The throw at the bottom just doesn't look as efficient, even though I'm applying the exact same amount of forces here. And if you bring the right shoulder forward like I was talking about earlier, the release is even faster, still with the exact same forces. And this makes sense too since the distance between the point of rotation and this elbow pivot is longer, which adds extra speed to this last link. Even if you make the upper right arm completely rigidly attached to the torso like this, the throw is just as good, which is quite interesting. Okay, and now let's get back to the real world. I figured I'd just have to consciously keep this angle at 90 degrees. I would literally just do this all the time, just to get a feel for the lag of this part and the looseness here, and then still keeping this rigidly at 90 degrees, and also feeling all the tight back muscles here. And that finally brought me the snap I'd been looking for. For the first time I could actually feel that the disc wants to leave my hand at a certain point of the throw, and to do it with a clear snap. Around the same time I also learned how to push the ground with my right foot as I planned, to give some extra oomph to the throw. But what's weird is that all this didn't really transfer into more max distance for some reason. What it did transfer into was more distance with putters and mid-ranges. I was able to throw mid-ranges further with less effort. And I was kind of confused about it at the time, like, why wouldn't I be able to throw drivers further too with the same technique improvement? But in retrospect it totally makes sense why this new form only seemed to work with slower mid-range and putter throws, because the timings and angles are so crucial in these things. A tiny difference in some angles or the timing of some movements can really affect the efficiency of the throw, and the quicker you try to execute a sequence of movements, you know, for a max distance throw, the more difficult it is to get it just right. So yeah, it just meant that I hadn't yet learned the new form in the quicker tempo that's required for the max distance throws. And it just ended up taking quite some time and a lot of repetitions to slowly get there. And to finally get to 120 meters, there was one more form fix slash mental realization that I recently had. This is something that's still ongoing, I haven't fully figured it out yet, and it's kind of two things at the same time. And the first one is the timing of the reachback. 
The issue is that I tend to let the disc go back here a little bit too early in the run-up. In this clip from a couple months ago you can see pretty well. It's often talked about how the disc should stay in place relative to the ground during the reachback. And here you can see that it's what I'm doing, the disc is staying pretty still here for the majority of the reachback. But the problem is that I started too early back here, which results in the right arm being straight a little bit before the torso is ready to rotate. And the disc then has no other options than to start sliding forward with the right hand and it slides up to here, which is where the right arm rotation starts. The problem with that is that I lose some momentum from the reachback. Like I don't think the idea of the reachback is to only get the disc here so that it has the room to accelerate, even though that's the most important thing. The idea is also to have this spring-like bounce back effect. So you bring your disc back here and you immediately spring forward and you have this spring-like force that's available to use if you time everything right. And the second thing that I noticed that has still been different in my form compared to many of the best throwers is that my X step is much longer. Many of the best players seem to do just a little X step like this. And in my videos you can see that I take quite a leap with the X step in comparison. And I just recently realized that if I take a shorter X step, the timing and placing of everything feels much more natural. Because of the short X step, the disc is naturally more or less on top of the left foot as it touches the ground and I can more easily use my left foot as like a marker for where to leave the disc and when to start the reach back. So yeah, I've been trying to work on this short X step in combination with the slightly quicker and spring-like reach back. So there it is, that's where I'm currently at with my throw. And like I said, everything is still ongoing and I have plenty of things to work on, especially consistency. It's really difficult to build up the muscle memory to have a consistent throw when you are constantly making changes to your form. And lately the X step and reach back thing have been the source of confusion and inconsistency. But I'm once again trying to build back the muscle memory one throw at a time. And now we will finally take a good look at the personal record throw that I teased in the beginning. Pretty good. That might be it. Let's go see. Yes. Guys, that was 126 meters, which is a bit over 400 feet. Finally, it took quite a while to get there, but I did it. Yeah, that was a big milestone for me personally. Like, I know 120 isn't all that much, like there are plenty of guys throwing putters 120 meters, which is nuts to me. But for me, I spent such a long time stuck in the 90 to 100 meters range, that I really thought I'd never be able to throw any further, but now I can. That record throw you saw actually started to bother me a little bit, because I had some trouble replicating it after that throw. There was a noticeable tailwind in that throw, it was not very strong, but enough to make me think that maybe it was just because of the wind. But since then I've thrown 120 meters or more uh, many times on different days, so it definitely wasn't just a fluke, but yeah, my max throw is still very inconsistent. Like if I throw a couple dozen max shots, maybe one or two of them will go that far, or something like that. But the goal, of course, is now to be able to throw that far consistently, so that's what I'm working on now. But finally, for the first time, I feel like I now have all of the major roadblocks cleared, and that my backhand form is becoming good enough that I can stop with the major overhauls and start just tweaking my form here and there and optimizing it for my body. I've waited two years to be able to make this video and say that, and now I finally feel like I can. I feel like I still definitely have more distance to unlock, and my form is obviously far from perfect, so there's a lot of work ahead of me still, and so if I ever get to 130, 40, even 150 meters, uh, I'll be sure to make a new video and take you through how I got there. But in any case, if you made it this far, thank you for watching this video, I hope you have a great day, and I hope this video was helpful or interesting in some way. I'll see you later. Bye.